Joining us now is Martin Luxen, the technical sales engineer with Allflex Technologies in the Netherlands. Welcome. Well, hi, Chris. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Could you tell us a little bit about Allflex and uh, what it does and what markets that it serves? Uh, Allflex is a company that uh, produces and designs electronics for uh, all sorts of markets. Yeah, we build machines uh, for uh, medical industry, uh, offshore industry, uh, as with the wind farms and the, the, sh the vessels with uh, ICCP systems on them. So it's, it's all kinds of industries that we serve with right. our electronics and software. Now, you mentioned uh, ICCP, uh, which uh, it stands for Impressed Current Cathodic Protection. That's, that's correct. And that's all I know about it. Um, well, it's it's a way to, um, to make sure that the ships or metal uh, doesn't rust uh, so that there is no corrosion. Uh, in the past, and they still do for, for, for ships, they use uh, sacrificial uh, anodes, what it's called. And what it does, it has all to do with how rust starts on a metal object. And that's all based on the physical fact that there is a potential difference between the metal and uh, the water in this case. And that potential difference uh, causes a metal to rust with uh, sacrificial anodes or with an ICCP system, which is an active system you can uh, lower this uh, potential difference between the two uh, materials. Uh, and as long as the potential is uh, similar or somewhat similar, uh, rust doesn't occur. <laughs> so that's what we actually do with ICCP. What you do is uh, you, you, flow, you let current flow through, in this case, the ocean, uh, and you create a sort of shield. Uh, it's, it's not totally my... Uh, my field of expertise, that's our customers, of course, right. but that's how it works. It lowers the potential and therefore uh, minimizes uh, rust. Can you tell me about how that kind of system requires a SCADA system? Yeah, the, the, well, we, we are electronic builders and software builders, so we built the electronics for the ICCP system over here. Uh, we have an SMB line, uh, we have programmers programming the, uh, the embedded systems inside the electronics on how to uh, the current the regulation system inside our ICCP system in the past it was mainly used for, for ships because it's standalone and you, you just put in the value and it, it regulates itself the ship doesn't rust so that's that's great <laughs> uh, but with uh, the offshore wind industry uh, it's, it's growing rapidly in uh, in Europe especially on uh, offshore wind farms the ICCP system can also be used to provide protection to the well to the to the monopiles you see <laughs> behind me. Right. The thing is, well, they are a lot of kilometers out of the coast, mm -hmm. and you need to check on shore what is happening with every system. And if necessary, we can also change values. We have around forty-five or forty wind farms at the moment running uh, running PT SCADA as. Uh, uh, for, for checking our systems. Not all wind farms are the same. Uh, it depends on the level of protection that is required by the end user. You can protect them from the inside or from the outside and uh, how many anodes you have. Uh, so how many current flows you will have around the turbine. That's all dependent on the size of the turbine and things like that. Uh, so that's that's the main variables that, that I'm playing with within PT Scala because we then know uh, what values we should check and how many values right. you take per turbine. Uh, parks go from 40 turbines to uh, 120 sometimes even. Um, you say that the this is a standalone SCADA system. Um, so tell us about the, the sort of SCADA architecture within that wind farm. Well, it's, it's not the SCADA system that is standalone. It's the, the ICCP system itself oh, that is standalone. Right. So, so if we unplug the SCADA, it will still work, but you cannot do any monitoring from the shore. That's why we use the SCADA and uh, the so if there's an alarm, uh, we, of course, can react to it. We can check if is, is something broken inside the system. Is it a setting that is wrong? Uh, do we need to change a setting uh, to make sure that it starts working again and the alarms are resolved? Is this a very large I.O. system? I think there are around 100 to 150 tags per turbine. It depends on the setting and the configuration, of course. Right. Uh, and then the number of turbines. We have actually some, some wind farms that are only 20 turbines, but uh, we also have one for 120 turbines. So, uh, it's, uh, but it's all copies of each other. So that's a relief for us. 
you went through a process of selection uh, when you chose this software, uh, VT SCADA. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, first of all, why you changed in the first place and uh, what you were looking for when you chose uh, a new platform? It, uh, it wasn't prepared for the new Windows versions. It was not really up to date. Uh, it looked old fashioned. Uh, so we started looking for something that always keeps going uh, to be updated. Uh, so we did a lot of research, we saw a lot of uh, SCADA uh, software. I, I did not have any experience with SCADA. So uh, for me, it, it was important that it had a, a short le learning curve. Right. <laughs> and uh, drag and drop uh, kind of system, uh, but with the flexibility of doing calculations, because with the alarm management, we do have some, some challenges. Uh, so we need to have some text that you can do some calculations. And, uh, in that way, it creates uh, certain conditions within VT SCADA for the alarms. Right. Uh, so that was uh, the, the reason why we chose VT SCADA was actually because it was pretty simple to build something. Can you tell us about what kind of strategies you use to streamline your development process when you're adding new objects uh, to create new applications for new parts of the wind farm? Uh, like I said, all wind farms are almost the same, uh, depending on if there are more power units available inside the wind farm, then, then I have to change things. Uh, but I can work mostly from a template. Right. So, of course, the template keeps on uh, updating every once in a while. And I think, oh, wow, this could be done easier. And then I do that. Uh, but uh, most of the time, I just work from a template that actually was created, uh, what, what is it, 10, 12 years ago. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's updated because uh, our software inside the ICCP system gets updated sometimes. Uh, so we have to have new values or new settings. So, well, some, some new features that you see within VT Scala can be uh, really handy just to, to update the whole uh, turbine right. template that we have. So you're able to like create a, your own turbine widget and then just drag yeah. and drop that on and then uh, adapt it to you know, whatever exactly. new things that you need. Exactly. And that's what we do most of the time. So where do operators usually interact with the system using the screens that you created? Um, it, it, it depends on the demands of the, of the end user. Uh, I know that our customer uh, that, that builds the complete ICCP system uh, that, and, and they place it inside the turbine, they like our screens. They check our <laughs> screens because it's, it's, you need to know uh, something about the system. They can check the voltages, uh, the output current of the whole system to see if that matches what their expectations. And, uh, and if a turbine is Polarized, and that's an interesting term, but that means that it's uh, at a certain point uh, the current uh, that you put in the ocean drops to a steady level, uh, and that means that there's some sort of calcium layer on the on the turbine which protected it itself, and right. this reduces the current that you have to put through the whole system. Those are the things they want to monitor, and they use the historical data viewer for that. With with the graphs, they can easily see uh, what values do and if they change like in a, in a certain expected way, you know, well, this turbine is protected. And when you, uh, when you create a new, uh, when you add a new wind farm to the system, uh, what is the testing process that you need to go through? Um, I have uh, an emulation uh, of, a, of, of a wind farm with, with two turbines on my desk. Uh, so I use that uh, to put in the settings that they have for that specific wind farm that, that I'm creating. And I, I do some testing especially on new features or things that change compared to the template that we use. That way I can test the whole system uh, <laughs> and just install it on the server and it, it works nine times out of 10. So now that you've uh, put all this work into, into developing this system and this workflow, uh, what are your plans for it in the future? Actually, we are working on a new uh, main module this, uh, or a new PLC, so to say, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, th this one we have been using, like I said, for around 12 12 years. Right. We are building a new one with, uh, that's actually prepared for uh, using in wind farms. The older system was based on usage in, uh, in ships. Of course, the system works in a wind farm, but we had to build everything and we had to build extra things uh, for the SCADA monitoring, of course, to use MUPPUS. Uh, so we had to build that in our main module in the software. So with the new one, uh, I'm also with development, with software development together, we are looking, well, what can make our life for both parties easy, for software and for me using VT Scala. And especially that goes 
for the alarm management system. Right. Well, great. Really. Thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, this has been Martin Luxon, the technical sales engineer with Allflex Technologies. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>